Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of Amy Romeo Crafts, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these fun holiday keychains using faux leather heat transfer vinyl and a Cricut. So if you're ready to learn how to make this project, let's go ahead and get started. The SVG file for this project is available in my shop. It's part of my holiday faux leather crafting event where I'm sharing a brand new holiday SVG and video tutorial every day for 20 days. I'll leave a link on the screen for you so you can get the SVG or you can visit amyromeo.com holiday to see all of the event's designs. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make these holiday keychains. I'll be using the Cricut Maker today, but you can use any of the current Cricut machines including the Cricut Joy and the Explore Air 2, because we're using the standard fine point blade that comes with all of those machines. So this project has two layers. There's a bottom faux leather layer for the keychain, and then there are top heat transfer vinyl layers. And I'll show you how to apply the heat transfer vinyl to the faux leather using heat. You can also use permanent vinyl instead of heat transfer vinyl if you wanted to. So I'm just using some solid brown and some solid white. This comes from Amazon. You can also get faux leather in sheets from lots of different places like sellers on Etsy. So I will link to some of my favorite solid faux leathers for you. And also the heat transfer vinyl. I'm using some regular green, some glitter white and some glitter red, but it's really up to you. So to apply the heat transfer vinyl to the faux leather, I'll be using my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting, which is just that first green bar. You can also use a traditional Easy Press if that's what you have on hand. I'll be using a cover sheet. This is a Teflon sheet that I've trimmed down to a smaller size. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper, but not wax paper. I have a heat pressing pad to protect my surface. And some other things we'll be using, some blue painter's tape, a weeding tool of some kind. You could use a pin pen style or a hook weeding tool. And then some craft scissors. I like to have regular craft scissors and then also some detailed scissors to trim any small areas of the faux leather as needed. These are curved. You could also use embroidery scissors. Then to glue the keychain together, we'll be using a fabric glue. I like Fabri-Tac, but you could use any good fabric glue or even barely art glue for this project. I'll be cutting the faux leather on the purple strong grip cutting mat and the vinyl on the green standard grip cutting mat. But if you're using either of the Cricut Joy machines, you can use the green joy mats that came with your machine. Then we have our little key ring. This is a split ring key ring. These are in gold, a gold finish. They also come in silver and we'll attach these. And then I'll also show you how to attach an optional faux suede tassel. These are also from Amazon. These are two and a quarter inch and these come with a different color metallic top. So you'll just want to match your key rings to the metallic top on your tassels. We've got these assortment packs in silver tops and gold tops. So let's hop over into Design Space and I'll show you how to cut out the mats and we'll begin to assemble the keychains. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG file is for this project. Select it and then click on Open. You'll see a preview here, click Upload and then click on it to select it from your recent uploads row and click add to canvas. So you can see our two holiday keychain designs here. We have a gingerbread man and a Christmas tree cake. And these are fold over keychains, which means this will be the front, this part will bend and fold over, and this will be the back. Our little key ring will sit right here in the middle. So the bottom layer here will cut from brown faux leather. This white layer will cut from white faux leather and I'm actually going to cut both of those on the same mat. I'll show you a little trick how to do that. And then we have some red heat transfer vinyl, green heat transfer vinyl, and some white. So what I'm going to do is use the color sync feature to put some like materials on the same mat so I can cut them together. Now, if you don't want to cut both of these at the same time, what I would do is ungroup, ungroup your shapes and then just select and delete whichever one you don't wanna cut, so you're just cutting one at a time. But I did wanna show you this color sync feature. If you are cutting a lot of faux leather and heat transfer vinyl items, this is a fun way to be able to cut them faster and more efficiently. So we'll click here on the color sync feature. So Design Space has separated them onto two different mats because they're two different colors, 
but we will be cutting them from the same material setting. So what I can do to get them on the same mat is to make them both the same color. You can do that by selecting your item and then coming up here to the color picker and choosing the color of the other item, the other layer, or you can use the color sync feature. I can drag the white layer here up to the brown layer, and then that will make both of these layers brown, and that means they will cut on the same mat. It does not mean that you have to cut this from brown faux leather, it just means you'll cut it on the same mat as this piece of brown faux leather. And when we cut, you'll see what I mean. Also, this white layer here, I'll be cutting from glitter heat transfer vinyl, and all these red shapes will also cut from glitter. So I can take this shape and drag it up here. It will turn red on your canvas, but don't worry. That just means it's going to be put on the same mat. So now our five mat project has become a three mat project. We'll click the make it button. We're cutting our materials on a mat. And the first thing we wanna do is go through and mirror each mat before we forget. That's because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. If you happen to be using permanent vinyl instead of heat transfer vinyl for these projects, you would not mirror the permanent vinyl mats, you only mirror heat transfer vinyl mats. Okay, so here we can see our mat is brown, but we're gonna cut from the faux leather that we put on the mat. So what I'm going to do is drag my tree shape over to one side. I have my brown gingerbread man on this side, and all I'm going to do is cut a piece of faux leather that will completely cut out these shapes. So a piece of brown faux leather, three inches wide and eight inches tall. And over here, we'll cut a piece of white faux leather, three inches wide and about eight and a half inches tall. We'll put the white here and we'll put the brown here and they'll cut together. On the green mat, I'm just going to drag my shapes apart from each other and from the edge just a little bit. This helps with cutting and weeding. And here I'll have a piece of green heat transfer vinyl, five inches wide and four inches tall. And then here's another one of those combined mats that we made. So these two gingerbread man shapes will cut from white glitter heat transfer vinyl, about six inches wide and a little over three inches tall. And then these shapes will all cut from red. So I'll put a piece of red heat transfer vinyl on this side of my mat little bigger than five inches wide and three inches tall. Okay, so let's click back on the faux leather mat because I like to cut that one first. Click continue. For the faux leather mat, I'll be using the faux leather paper thin setting, regardless of what Cricut machine you are using. This is the setting that I recommend and I like to use more pressure. That's really important in helping us get a good cut here you can see we're just using that regular fine point blade that comes with all of the Cricut machines. If you don't have this setting bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search for and find this setting. Now these two mats I will cut using my manufacturer's recommended cut settings. For the green mat, I will end up using just the vinyl setting with default pressure. For this glitter mat, I'm using Caesar Glitter Heat Transfer Vinyl, which is a little bit thick. So I'm going to use the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure, and then I will repeat the cut one time. I've found that if I use the glitter vinyl setting with more pressure, the cut is too deep. But glitter vinyl with default pressure and repeating the cut two times seems to do the trick. If you're using different materials, then you'll just want to use whatever the recommended cut settings are for your material. So we'll click back up here on our faux leather mat. We have our faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure ready to go. Let's hop back over to my overhead camera and we'll cut out all of the mats for this project and we'll put together our holiday keychains. So I've gone ahead and trimmed my faux leather down to those sizes I saw in the mat preview screen. I know it doesn't seem like an important thing, but when you trim the faux leather down to a size just slightly larger than the shapes that are going to cut, it's going to help your material stick better to your mat and it's gonna eliminate the shifting that happens when you put a large piece of faux leather down. We're gonna help this with some blue painter's tape. So the small piece plus the blue painter's tape really makes a huge difference in getting good faux leather cuts with your Cricut. So I've got my brown piece here. I'm gonna put it pretty side down on my mat, press it all over really well with my hands. If you have a brayer, you can use that too. 
Here's the white. I've got the pretty side of the white is going down on the mat. And this is how we're gonna cut the two pieces of faux leather from different colors at the same time on the same mat. Now I'm just gonna tape down on all sides. And I use blue painter's tape because it doesn't leave a sticky residue on my material or on my mat. And even though it is more expensive than something like masking tape, you can reuse these pieces. I actually just peel up these masking tape pieces and I have a whole bunch of them stuck on my wall and I reuse them over and over several times. Okay, there we go. So remember we have that faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure all set to go. Our regular fine point blade is in the Cricut. We'll just load the mat into the machine and begin the cut. So the cut is complete and the faux leather paper thin setting is an automatic double cut. So it's actually cut twice, but we still wanna to check to see if the cut went all the way through because we can repeat the cut if necessary. So let me take my sharp weeding tool and just get in here and see if the cut went all the way through. And that looks pretty good. See how easily I can lift that up. You'll wanna do that on both sides. If the cut did not go all the way through, it's no problem. You can rerun the cut as many times as needed as long as you haven't unloaded your mat. So you can just press the cut button again to repeat the cut or on the Cricut Joy, the option to rerun the cut is on your screen in Design Space. This looks good though, so we'll unload the mat and we'll remove our shapes. And then I can show you a little better how the fold over keychain works. What we'll do is slide our key ring on and then we'll fold this over and glue. We'll do the gluing after we press our heat transfer vinyl. If we glued first and then pressed with heat, it could cause that glue, uh, the glue can heat up and make the faux leather bubble and it will ruin your keychain. So we want to press the vinyl first and then glue. There's our little Christmas tree cake and that looks really cute. So now I'm going to hop back into Design Space and cut out our vinyl layers one at a time. And then we'll put together our key rings. Okay, so I've cut and weeded all of my faux leather and vinyl layers. And remember to check for any fuzzies on the edge of your faux leather. It's not very common, but it happens from time to time. And use some small scissors or embroidery scissors just to trim up the edges. And then I've put my gingerbread man here. I have my Easy Press Mini set to low. And these sides are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which gingerbread man outline you put on which side. You'll just want to line it up on your faux leather and there should be a nice border of faux leather all around the edge of the white all the way around the edge and that's how you know you've got this in the right spot and all we're going to do is cover with that little cover sheet either a teflon sheet or parchment paper or butcher paper and we're going to press for 10 seconds all over so i'll use the easy press mini and I like to move it around, but you don't have to move it around. It can just sit there. If you're using a regular Easy Press, you would just place it down for 10 seconds. So we'll put aside our cover sheet and then keeping the faux leather flat, we want to slowly and carefully peel the clear carrier sheet over that heat transfer vinyl. And you wanna do this slowly because if the vinyl lifts up, you can just place it right back down and press for a few more seconds. But this looks pretty good. There we go. I'll just flip this over and do the other side. That looks good. And now we'll just line up our little bow tie and our buttons. And again, we'll cover and press. And that looks pretty cute. 
So this faux leather is warm, and what I'd like to do is let it cool flat before we glue it together. So I'm just gonna place it here on my work surface and put it underneath my pressing pad while we work on the other one. So we've got our little Christmas tree here. And I want to do the green layer first because this one is not glitter. This is regular heat transfer vinyl and it's a thinner material. So I wanna put that thinner material down before I put a thicker one so that we have good pressure on both layers. And all I'm doing now is just checking dry fitting or just placing this red layer on top to make sure that I've got the green little sprinkles in the right place. And it looks like I do. So again, we'll just cover and press. Again, keeping the faux leather flat, we'll just carefully peel back. And again, we'll repeat with the other side. So that looks good. Now we'll apply that thicker glitter layer. And that looks great. So again, we'll place this under our heat pressing pad, let it cool in a flat position. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my heavy book because we're going to use that as a way to help us get these keychains really nice and flat and well glued together at the seams after we glue them. Okay, so I have my heavy book, I have my two keychains, and I have the key rings. And we wanna apply these first before we glue. If you forget, it's no big deal, but that way we're not trying to rub this key ring on this little faux leather bridge piece. So I'm just going to fold my little gingerbread man so I can slide on the key ring. Then I'll turn it over. And what I want to do is apply glue all over the back of one side. You don't wanna get it on that bridge piece and you don't need to get it on the other side. You just need to get it on one side. If you're using barely art glue, you're gonna to need to use more glue than you would use if you were putting it on the back of cardstock or something. You wanna really get a nice layer of glue. And I'm getting close to the edge, but not all the way to the edge. Because this glue, this glue naturally will seep to the edge a little bit when we press it under the book, which is exactly what we want. That's gonna help us get a nice, nice tight seam edge. But if you put too much glue, then it will seep out and make a mess, so. Now I'm just folding over my little keychain here. What I want to do is look at him from the front and the back, just make sure that he's all lined up. That actually looks pretty good. And you can see before we glue, the edges are very open and it's not very tight on the, the edges yet. But you'll see after we press this, the weight of the heavy book is gonna help make this nice and flat. So we'll just press this. So we'll just place this one under here and then I'll repeat with the Christmas tree cake. And there we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna let these two sit here under my heavy book for at least an hour, hopefully a little bit longer. And then I'll show you how to attach that little tassel, the faux suede tassel, just to add a little pop of color and interest. So the keychains have been drying underneath the book and we'll just take a look and see how they dried. Oh, and that looks really cute. Let me see if I can show you the edge. See how nice, nice and tight that is? It's almost seamless. Now it is a white edge because the back of the faux leather is white. In this particular case, if you wanted to, you could take a brown Sharpie and you could very carefully color the edges all around the faux leather brown if you wanted to, but that's totally optional. That looks great. And here on the Christmas tree cake, those white edges, you don't need to color them, you know, because they're white, but that is an option with these faux leather keychains that are fold over style if you wanted to color the edges. Okay, so I have my little faux suede tassels that I picked out. I chose a red and a green. Again, I'm matching that metal color of the tassel to the key ring color. And I'll leave a link to where I get these on Amazon because the, this is a specific size. This is two and a quarter inch. Sometimes the tassels on Amazon look bigger than they are. This is a size that I like. So I'm using 
10 millimeter jump rings, just a very basic jump ring. You could use a bigger size if you needed to, but we do need a jump ring because the little hole here in the tassel, that hole is not large enough to slide onto the key ring directly. So we need a little jump ring to connect. I'm just going to open this up very quickly. Just open it, slide on the tassel, slide it onto that key ring, and then close it back up. We'll do the same thing for the gingerbread man. And that's it. Our little holiday keychains are complete. I hope you like this project. If you want to see all of the 20 holiday faux leather crafts I've created for my faux leather crafting event, I'll leave a link to a playlist for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.